Welcome uh, viewers to the 13th lecture of the course uh, Metal Cutting and Machine Tools. So, today uh, we will be starting a discussion on the different aspects of the first machine tool that we have selected the lathe. Okay. So, today let us start right away on a discussion on the lathe. So, first of all the lathe is a machine, machine tool on which surfaces of revolution can be produced. That is I can make a cylinder, I can make a cone, I can uh, make a flat surface uh, you know by uh, which is uh, also a surface of revolution. I can make grooves, I can make threads, I can make uh, frustrums of cones. Uh, so, uh, all these which are surfaces of revolution, I can make uh, you know uh, curved surfaces also. So, all these which are surfaces of revolution, they can be produced on the lathe. On the lathe basically, we have to uh, first of all uh, have provision for holding the work piece rigidly and securely, so that it does not slip, because uh, heavy forces are going to occur during uh, cutting of metals for example, in hundreds of Newtons. So, here on the figure we see the uh, you know work piece shown, this is the work piece or the job or the part or the item on which we are going to carry out the cutting action, so that we get a desired shape and size. This is the cutting tool ab about which we have already studied, you know the tool geometry and other things they all. Uh, you know uh, pertain to this particular body, the cutting tool in short I have written C slash T. There are some bolts shown here with the help of which I am attaching the cutting tool securely okay, uh, uh, to the tool post, this is the tool post. So, just like the work piece uh, uh, the cutting tool also has to be held very securely, so that it does not move or you know slip from its position. As you can see, the cutter is given a rotatory motion. The cutter is given a rotatory motion and the cutting tool is given a longitudinal motion parallel to the axis of rotation of the work piece. It might be given different uh, types of motion. This is one the typical motion which is called straight turning in which if the cutter is you know moving parallel to the axis of the work piece, in that case it produces another smaller cylinder. Okay. The work piece is being held on a work holding device called a chuck okay. and uh, if, if you refer to this quick notes, there can be different types of uh, work piece holding devices like we can have a face plate, we can have the work piece held between centers and a lathe dog. Okay we can have a face plate, uh, sorry face plate we have already mentioned. So, we can have three jaw chucks, self centering chucks and four jaw independent chuck that means all the four jaws these are the jaws. Okay. So, these may move separately independently of each other or they may move concentrically you know, on the circumference of a circle. So, different work holding devices are there tool is held on the tool post okay, and relative motion is you know uh, obtained from the you know from the machine tool. The machine tool should be able to provide some relative motions by which cutting will be possible. So, hold the two securely and provide relative motion this is the main function of the machine tool. Okay, Let us see. This is you know we are going on adding. So, the, with this add on process ultimately we will be getting the full picture of the lathe. This, here comes the prime mover the motor. From the motor in order to rotate the work piece we see that we have put something in between. What is this? This is called a speed gear box. What is its utility? You know we might not always want to rotate the work piece at a particular rpm we might be changing this rotational rate and in order to be able to change this rotational rate, 
we give provision to you know there is provision in the machine to change this particular rpm or rotations per minute. How do we do it? We are going to see that in a few moments, but first of all what are the other things that have been shown here? Here there is a threaded element called a lead screw, lead screw shown which is you know deriving power from the uh, motor only and it is interesting to notice that it is after the speed gear box that the bifurcation for power of the lead screw is taking place. How is the lead screw being uh, utilized in order to make the tool move? So, the tool is being moved with the help of the lead screw. There is a device called a half nut inside the tool post. We will see a, a, a detailed view of the tool, uh, sorry, uh, you know, uh, uh, carriage later on. But this is part of the carriage seen from the top. The carriage has different parts like, uh, you know, apron and saddle, etc. It is basically a device which can move and you know move by the side of the uh, spindle containing the job so that the tool is given a relative motion with respect to the workpiece. So, this is part of the carriage. So, uh, let me quickly uh, put in all these notes that we are coming across. So, this I am calling the carriage seen from the top and this is the lead screw already written down, this is the speed gearbox and in fact, just a moment let me, okay. So, in fact, we also have, we also have another gearbox which I have not shown at this moment which is called the feed gearbox. Why have two gearboxes like this one after the other? This is because just like I would like to change the rate of rotation of the workpiece, I would I might also like to change the rotations per minute and ultimately the tool movement rate okay, per revolution of the workpiece past the workpiece. That means, I might want to make this tool move at different rates. Okay. Generally, this particular rate of movement is not expressed but with respect to time, but it is rather it is expressed with respect to the uh, rotation rate of the workpiece. We will come to that in a few moments. So, we have yet another device which I have not written, it is called feed gearbox. So, this is roughly the you know kinematic structure how power flows from the motor through different gearboxes. Okay. Now, let us have a quick look at the basic structure of the lathe that we have defined up till now. So, for that let me okay. So, let us first of all select fresh page in which we start with you know here we had the motor from the motor there was the shaft and we had the gearbox speed gearbox. From the speed gearbox, we had a bifurcation. Power was going this way and it was serving the tool. So, this is called feed gearbox. <coughs> and this is the spindle. Here I have the part. Now, what is the basic why do we choose this basic structure of the machine, I mean on the lathe? On this one I have a nut which I am calling the half nut and on that is sorry, is mounted the tool. So, this is called lead screw. 
the basic idea is this that the speed gearbox should change the uh, you know rpm of the part and nothing else so straight it is connected speed gearbox should not affect the you know feed of the tool but obviously if it is placed upstream of the tool it is definitely going to affect if it is changed suppose we change the settings inside the gearbox speed gearbox so that the output gets multiplied by 2 in that case we will definitely find that the you know whatever is the movement that will get multiplied by 2 however the feed which is defined in millimeters per revolution it will remain the same even if i change the speed gearbox why so that's because suppose i have you know let us take a an actual example say the the speed which is coming and the part rotation is part rpm equal to say it is um, how much 500 and say the tool feed rate is 5 millimeters per minute in that case tool feed in millimeters per revolution of workpiece comes out to be you know 5 millimeters per minute by 500 revolutions per minute per minute per minute cancels per minute per minute cancels so that we have this is equal to 5 by 500 millimeters per revolution that is of course 1 by 100 0 0.01 millimeters per revolution ok but where are we heading to I am claiming that this tool feed remains constant even if you change speed gearbox setting. That means tool feed in millimeters per revolution will remain same whether you change speed gearbox setting or not. Speed gearbox will change the you know RPM of the part, no problem with that, but it will not affect feed. In the same way, feed gearbox setting will not affect part RPM, but it will definitely change the tool feed in millimeters per revolution this is how the lathe architecture has been you know uh, contemplated ok. So, uh, let us see whether tool feed changes or not I multiply the output of the speed gear box by 2 that means I do something inside the speed gear box you know just like you know changing the gear of an automobile I can get different speed outputs. In the same way, I multiply the output by 2. Therefore, in this expression, this gets multiplied by 2. Naturally, the tool also becomes faster because it is downstream. This gets multiplied by 2 and therefore, in the denominator and numerator here, they get multiplied by 2. And therefore, it remains, you know, this cancels out and this remains 1 by 100 millimeters per revolution. So, speed gear box is so placed that it does not affect the feed of the tool and that is why you will find that the bifurcation for power is taken after the speed gear box. Okay. So, millimeters per revolution being the unit of feed you know makes it independent of speed gearbox settings. So, that have a, have, after have we have gone through that let us come back to the original discussion. In the original discussion, so it is understood. Now, what is this lead screw doing here? Does it pertain to feed? Lead screw is generally used for thread cutting and we have yet another you know such a shaft parallel to the lead screw which is used for longitudinal feed. 
So, we are making a difference between lead screw and feed rod for obtaining different types of motion of the cutting tool. So, are there machines in which feed rod is absent? Yes, there are some machines in order to you know save money and mechanisms etc. The lead screw has just a keyway all through and that serves the purpose of a lead screw as well as that of the feed rod. Now, let us go back to our discussion. So, we have roughly got this idea bifurcation of power taking place after the speed gear box and here the lead screw rotating and making the tool move. And here there was the, the existence of the speed feed gear box which we have seen during our uh, you know rough calculation manual calculations that we did. So, it is time that we can have the have a look at the next slide. Okay, in the next slide what we see is the now the upper part of the carriage called the saddle just like we put a saddle or seat on the on the back of a horse on the on, on top of the lathe bed seen from the top okay the basic body of the lathe we have put a saddle like element okay so this one is containing the tool then why not the what's the lead screw doing the lead screw is simply passing through the carriage and we can we may or may not connect to the lead screw to derive power but the carriage as a body is simply like a car on wheels on a track this is the track okay this is the track on which the carriage can travel so let it travel this is it the carriage can travel from one side to the other just like a train on rails it has one straight rail on one side you know to provide enough bearing surface a flat surface is the best bearing surface and on this side in order to keep it located on a particular you know direction we have a v-shaped uh, guide let us let us quickly have a look at that this in the other uh, in actual uh, you know side view will look like this a v-shaped guide on top this carriage can rest actually the carriage might be having some encompassing uh, guy slide and guide connection in order that it does not topple but this will if this is the if this is the carriage and if this is this particular track okay it cannot move this way it cannot move this way but it has to be located along this direction okay so the saddle is able to move and it takes the tool with it and the tool can you know remove material this way okay so now let's move on to the next part of the discussion we also have another very important uh, mechanism just a moment we also have another very important mechanism which is uh, uh, machine element which is called the tail stock you can see the tail stock is drawn in white color here to make it cons conspicuous so that we can notice it and how does it you know how does it come into the picture you will find that we have made a skin section here to show that the rear end of the workpiece ha is having a you know hole it is called it, it that hole is done by something called a combination center drill and inside that hole okay the hole is a little more intricate in shape inside that hole goes in something called a center okay it is basically a cone at the front and at the back also it is a frustum of a cone which is fitting inside a fitting tapered hole of the steel stock spindle this one can move out and move in by rotating this particular handle so the tail stock can be you know moved just like the saddle the tail stock can be moved okay why does the tail stock have to be moved because for for jobs of different length it has to be located at different positions 
In addition to that, this just a moment, this particular uh, what do you call it the spindle that can also be moved out and in. So, the basic idea is put the tailstock at the lo uh, desired location and clamp it to the lathe bed and then make the spindle uh, move out or in as you desire. So, at this moment the tailstock is being used to hold the rear end of the workpiece because workpiece might be sufficiently long and if it is not held on this side it might be sagging and that will cause a lot of inaccuracies. The tailstock however might also be used for holding tools. For example, we might be holding a you know a, a drill or we might be holding a drill chuck, we might be holding so many other types of tools. So, at this moment it is holding the rear end of the workpiece and it also has its own rails just like the saddle and we have shown two such rails here a flat on this side and once again a V on that side uh, on our side. Okay. So, as we have built up the machine tool now we see that these are the basic parts of the machine tool and they have their respective functions. Yeah, this is the you know a, a more detailed figure of the gearbox that we were naming just now. What is a gearbox? You know just like we have speed gearbox and feed gearbox they have some machine elements inside. So, that if they are you know shifted from one position to the other we would be attaining different output rotations you know uh, output rotations of the gearbox. So, which is the input and which is the output? We have shown here three shafts basically. So, let us see this is one shaft number one here I am putting in the input. What do I mean by that? Maybe I am putting in a motor. So, let me draw here okay, a motor. My drawing is not very good. Okay. I have put a motor here. So, if I connect up a motor what are these things? So, these are basically gears let me see, write down gears. What do gears look like? You know gears will be looking like this. and they will be you know uh, connecting up with other gears. Like this. So, that if this one rotates this one will be rotating with it. Okay. Okay. We will be having a little more uh, detailed discussion about gears. So, Please imagine that these are gears seen from the side. That means this shaft would be, uh, you know, looking this way. This is one gear drawn in in a simple form like this. This is the larger gear, and I've drawn it as if it is from the side, so that we will just see rectangles. So this is the input shaft it is rotating due to its connection with the motor and these are two gears on it. This one is another gear I mean a set of gear, two a pair of gears which is sometimes referred to as sliding clusters. So, this is a sliding cluster what does it do? It can slide along the shaft, but still maintain rotational connection that means if the shaft rotates the sliding cluster has to rotate. The other way if the sliding cluster is rotating it will make the shaft rotate. Okay. So, this way this can be moved sideways. How does it have that uh, you know continuity of connection by you know you can just have a key way on the shaft. There can be a shaft of this type just a moment sorry. there can be a shaft of this type with a gap here and on that gap will fit our gear. The gear will also have a fitting gap here I mean fitting tooth here. So, that 
when they rotate together they have to rotate and when the gear wants it can longitudinally move along the axis of the shaft the shaft will not be affected ok. So, this is what is there on these and this sign is the sign that they are having this sort of a connection ok sliding connection key and key way. So, let us see how the thing proceeds. So, this is the way in which it can be slid or it can come back also you can have this position as well as that position. Now, why have we shown three shafts because by shifting it from here to here I can get different speed ratios these two gears will have different teeth ratio and these two gears will have different teeth ratio and they will give rise to different speeds on the intermediate shaft. On the intermediate shaft we are having three more gears and the same thing is being done by this particular sliding cluster. So, that you can have two speeds here multiplied by three speeds here. So, that I can have six output speeds here. This is the shift it can be placed here or middle or it can also be put in this contact ok. So, once it is put at some position we can leave it there and it will have it will maintain connection at that particular point. So, this is the way in which gearboxes operate there are mainly three two gearboxes on the lathe one is for speed gearbox that means speed changing and another is for feed gearbox or feed changing and basically they use some device like this or some other related devices like Norton tumbler arrangement, meander drive etcetera. When we get time we will definitely go through these. This is the way in which the apron mechanism of the carriage operates. So, what is the carriage? It is a car, it is simply a car nothing else. Then where is the wheel of the car? This is the wheel of the car this one wheel where is the road this is the road this rack is the track of the wheel. So, how does it move you know this is the feed rod by the same mechanism as we have discussed it has a key way inside it and on that fits a worm I will I will uh, explain what a worm is there fits a worm and the worm is in connection with a worm gear. So, that if this rotates if this rotates this one rotates it makes this rotate and you know this one also rotates this one makes this rotate this one makes this rotate and ultimately it starts moving this way let us see how. that is it it simply moves this way ok. So, this is how the carriage is working. So, this mind you is the feed rod feed rod not the lead screw the lead screw is just by the side of it in order to maintain simplicity I have removed it. I have also removed the mechanisms for you know automatic feed mechanism for foolproof arrangement mechanism for uh, you know cross feed all these things I have removed for maintenance of simplicity because at this moment we are not knowing anything about these uh, mechanisms for, for, for example what is this this is a straight sided gear called a rack and to, to that fits an, a small gear which is generally referred to as the pinion ok. These are all gears this one is a worm gear ok. Ok, so with this we come to the end of the 13th lecture, thank you very much.